I have four copies of a poem by Adrian Rich, and these people have not seen it at all. They are about, they still haven't seen it. I have it. People in the audience have it. So this is a metapoetic activity in that we are actually trying to do what the poems have said as a group, randomly chosen, right? You didn't know that. Okay. And the poem itself is about a classroom, and it's about what happens when you bring poetry into a classroom. So I'm going to pass it out to these unsuspecting characters. I'm going to read it, and then we're going to talk about it. Holy cow. What will happen? <laughs> Close up of Emma's expression. What will happen, Emma? We're going to talk about it. Okay, we're, we're, yeah. we're going to do it. All right, here we go. In a classroom. Talking of poetry. Hauling the book's arm full to the table where the heads bend or gaze upward, listening, reading aloud, talking of consonants, elision, caught in the how, oblivious of why. I look into your face, Jude, neither frowning nor nodding, opaque in the slant of dust motes over the table, a presence like a stone. If a stone were thinking, what I cannot say is me. For that, I came. Okay, guys, so we have a teacher. We also have a student, apparently, Jude, but we have a teacher. What kind of teacher? Mateo, how's this teacher doing? What, what's this teacher teaching? All that. So this is a poetry English class, and then everybody is... Lecture bent. class or seminar? I'm assuming this is a lecture class because everyone's bending or gazing upward since there's like a, a difference in like um, I've never direction. said you were wrong, but I'm going to now. Interesting. <laughs> Why? Well, let's, where are they? They are on the, in a table. Not, so the table is suggests a seminar. Seminar, seminar. But even though it's a seminar, everybody is gazing upward towards the teacher who is talking and they are listening um, about these different concepts that they're talking about, which is consonants and elision. Maria, is this an exciting teaching situation? They're talking about consonants and elision. I think the suggestion is that they're missing the point. They're very focused on the form, apparently, which is implied by the how, but oblivious of why. So, and their discussion of how something is conveyed, they may not be quite arriving at the reason for which it is so. Emma, are they excited or bored? I think the students themselves seem to be kind of bored because they're, they're, the heads are bent or gazing upward. There's not really connection between the speaker and the people that she's observing. But I do think there might be, uh, there's something a little bit more optimistic about the description of Jude and the he's neither frowning nor nodding. It's like a blank stone. And maybe she's saying, I, I'm thinking about for that I came. And yeah. I, I wonder if she's saying, look at this, you know, person that I can uh, try to get excited about reading and maybe help to mold and shape. So let's, the three of you, just say a little bit about Jude. We can go further after that. Mateo, who's Jude? Mm. Why is Jude the only one that gets named and looked at it's interesting because this person jude um is neither frowning nor nodding but the speaker is recognizing that neutral position and sort of like that is what is in the the teacher's mind that maybe that neutral position is the most emotion that's coming out of the student and that's why it's being so in vivid of the, the of the teacher and i think that says a lot about what the classroom is like, that he is picking some random person, Jude, um, with that type of uh, expression and trying to like analyze it like that. Maria? I think maybe another way to look at it is rather than seeing them as like unsure, like the, the Jude person themselves, maybe the teacher is the one who cannot say what, the, what, what Jude is thinking and being unsure of what they might have inspired in that person so seeing that they're neither agreeing with the teacher nor actively disagreeing but rather thinking their own independent thoughts is for what the teacher came 
Emma Maria did two really smart things. First, she meant she used the um, them, they, them pronoun for Jude, and that's mm -hmm. because Jude is the name Jude is not identified tra traditionally or conventionally by gender. So this is a this is a them. This is a person named but not identified. And the other thing, Emma, that Maria said that's so great is that Jude is neutral. Jude is neutral and opaque. And normally, if you're a teacher, that's not a good thing to see a student out there in your, in your class who's not registering anything. But this might be good, Emma, and I guess we should go there. Yeah, I mean, I, I have two thoughts. I guess, like, first, it says oblivious of Y colon, and the rest of the half of the poem is, I think, an answer to why we're in the space. The fact that, like, you could have a student who will show up who will not come posturing or like, I need to, you know, have X, Y, Z really strong opinion so that I can get X, Y, Z participation points. I think of what we've talked a lot in this class about is like a willingness to say, you know, I don't know, to like try and navigate through something with someone else or a willingness to acknowledge that like there are some parts of poetry where like you're just not going to be able to get to a definitive answer. Um, and I think that the teacher might almost be appreciative of the fact that they have this student who is kind of just showing up on um, willing to be present, kind of like the Sig Corman poem where it's just like, you came and you stayed and that's enough. This is a poem about interpreting a poem and we are, despite the opacity of the poem and the strange opacity of the moment, we're trying to interpret the poem about the activity of interpreting poems and Jude is reticent and resistant and recalcitrant so let's go back. What I cannot say is me. So far, what's been said is, Maria, I don't know who I am. That's very moving to me. If a student is sitting there stone-faced and implying I don't know who I am, even in your classroom, Emma's saying the very thing that I can't say is the thing that is me. Mateo, try another. Um, it's really a powerful statement for a student not to be making because it's imputed to her by the teacher. That makes me think that, you know, the, the teacher is the one who's, you know, um, observing Jude, like sort of going off of what the teacher sees. And then they are kind of not able to see what Jude, if he or she is able to, to make similar observations that the teacher is making in the poem. So final thoughts. What I cannot say is me, says Jude. I think the teacher is kind of in love with this Stuart student, but cannot reach them. Because this is the very student who wouldn't respond to this teaching. And that is the reason this poet came to this poem. And that is the reason why the speaker in the poem wants to have Jude in her classroom and that is the reason why it's mm. important for us to look at opacity and to see the silences in the poetry and in our discussions. Final thoughts on this whole question. Mateo's doing his Mateo nod, so I assume <laughs> that means you're not sure yet. Well, what, what your thoughts made me think about is like, so you're saying that because this Jude character is not paying or not really invested in the 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 current like discussion you know like the opacity the the image of like the stone makes it seem like the the, the teacher is intending to like sculpt or or trying to like interact with the student you know make something out of it um and that this is why the the whole purpose of of, of teaching is to to get a neutral position and do something out of it and to allow neutrality and mm -hmm. to allow stone-like silence which actually could be for Jude, very productive, because mm -hmm. if she can't say who she is, then she shouldn't say, and that is who she is. Or they, I'm sorry. Maria? Um, I also think there's this like symmetry to the poem where in the first five lines there's a lot of sound and a lot is happening, and then there's a shift to the I pronoun, and there's a zoom in into a silent interaction as you highlighted. There's now nothing is being said. A lot of things are impossible to be expressed and I think for what the teacher came even though they initially were focusing on everything that was going on on the surface is also they came for that 
to to like understand that it's acceptable to be impenetrable and to have those thoughts to oneself or to, to just experience the class in themselves sort of mm-hmm. and for themselves even mm-hmm. if they don't always get to draw others in cool so subjectivity is sometimes unsaid we don't have evidence for subjectivity sometimes which is the case for jude jude is intensely subjective even though they're not saying it not expressing the subjectivity and the subjectivity is not discernible emma final thought i just think there's something very beautiful about the ambiguity of the last two lines of the poem like i know we had talked about how you know that you don't really know who the i is but like the I could be the speaker, the teacher. The I could be the fact that Jude has showed up to maybe try to learn something about themselves or the world around them in the class. But also, it's in a, almost like an imaginary uh, projection of what a stone might be thinking. And I think we go from this kind of like really uh, common sense focus, trying to analytically reason something out, talk about you know the granularities of a poem to then this kind of like fantastical image of what if a stone had thoughts and that's the closest thing that the teacher can get to trying to think of what the mm-hmm. student themselves might be thinking. So I mm-hmm. think it's a cool um, arc, I think. Well, my final thought is simply that we don't know what the poem is that's being talked about in this classroom and it doesn't matter. <laughs> what we have is a poem about that day that she brought a poem in to talk about But what happened is that her entire approach to teaching poetry gets questioned and maybe radicalized. And what's left is the poem about that. And that is the poem that we should be reading, not the poem that was taught. And that is why we come to a conversation like this. That is why we keep coming back to poems like this, not because of the poem that caused us to have the conversation, but the story of the conversation itself. Thank you guys, you're fantastic. You just had no idea, right? Can you swear you did, never saw this poem before? Nothing up your sleeve, presto. Thank you. Well, audience, what do you think?